Well, a very good afternoon and welcome to a wet and windy Sydney Harbour for the second day racing of the Australian Championship for the 18-foot skiffs. Two races are scheduled for today, but the big news is we're on a significant postponement. Um, about 20 minutes ago, half an hour ago, which is around about 2 o'clock Sydney time, there was a, a quite a vicious rain squall that swept across the course area and uh, on the rigging area where the boats were preparing to get out to the start and it caused a, a bit of a significant damage to a lot of the boats that upended a few, a few um, boats mast came onto other boats sails and caused some uh, tears in those mainsails especially so the committee have wisely decided to postpone till quarter past three which is Sydney time so it'll be a, a good half an hour's delay before we get underway for races two and three and as I said, it's wet, it's windy, and as I introduce Andrew Buckland, I'm Peter Shipway, and I'll be with Jimmy Bury. So, Andrew, you've got plenty of time to talk about the weather, the water temperature in Coffs Harbour, Western Tasmania. So over to you, and a very good afternoon. Thanks, Pete. It's uh, remarkably similar to yesterday would be the summary, and that summary was, in effect, uh, you know, probably today we'll see 14 to 22 south-south-east, 140 to 160 compass, the water offshore is hot, which is what drove that squall that hurt the boats in the park, Peter. How's that? Water, yes. te water temperature offshore, maybe 26 and a bit. <clears throat> in the oh. harbour here, about 21. Well, Jimmy, we've got um, two races scheduled today, and at the moment they've signalled what the course is going to be, so just run us through those. G'day, Pete. Yeah, today we're doing Windward Lewards um, from Taylor's Bay. We're just currently up at the top mark up in Rose Bay, just slowly drifting down past Shark Island down to where the, the start's going to be down in Taylor's Bay. So the signals that I seen on the boat earlier were six over two, so a two lapper, two of them. Um, just Windward Lewis with the island in the middle is going to play a big, Shark Island being in the middle of the course is going to play a big uh, role in this, I think. So the usual decision in the southeast of which side of the island to go, but we'll talk a bit more about that uh, as we get closer to start time. But if you just join us, we're on delay for about half an hour before we get underway because of a bit of damage that occurred to the uh, fleet in the park as they were rigging and the squall went through and uh, so the committee have wisely decided to hold things back for half an hour or so. But let's, as we drift slowly downwind in this uh, quite strong breeze and grey old sky as we look up to the Sydney Harbour Bridge there you can see a bit of misty rain around. Um, let's recap on yesterday's first heat and that was on a full course southeasterly of about uh, anything between I guess 14 to 18 knots but uh, we saw a very convincing performance by the boys on Andu and they uh, um, about 50 second winners from Smeg and Tech 2 was third so Andrew um, and do. They had a capsize, but they did enough to get the boat up quickly and go on to a very convincing win. They would have been pretty happy with their speed, especially upwind. Well, Pete, they didn't have one capsize, they had two, and we didn't capture either of them in real time. But the one on the top reach the first time, they got endoed, you know, with a bowman forward dropping the chute. So endo means stern over bow, basically, and that's usually pretty serious and a bit demoralizing but they got going pretty well and then another quick dip just a bit of a bad tack and a fall over out of the tack um, right up near the top mark so that was a very short episode perhaps only 15 seconds or something so yeah they were pretty quick and interestingly um, Tech 2 wasn't very quick and Tech 2 had all new standing rigging in the boat yesterday evidently and they were confident that uh, some overnight tweaks will restore them back to their former glory, but a bit of unequal, <coughs> unequal stretch in, in the wires on the Tech 2 as they bedded in, die form wire, just bedding in, in in its first full load experience. Well, as we look at Shark Island, which is going to play a significant part in this, uh, t these two races today, which will split the fleet up, we might just go through the results from yesterday, and we had a First place to Andu, which was Seve Jarvan. Second was Smeg, Michael Coxon, in his best, best performance of the year. Third was the defending champion, Tech 2, who's won the last two Australian titles. 
Fourth was Harry Price in Rag and Famish. Fifth, Finport, Keegan York, his best race of the year also. Sixth was Noakes Sailing, Sean Langman. Seventh was Lazarus Capital Partners, Marcus Ashley Jones. Eighth, Shaw and Partners, Steve Thomas. Ninth, the Balmain Slake, Henry Larkins, a young team that um, started the season quite well and then came back strongly in the last few weeks. Tenth was the veteran, John Winning, senior uh, in Yandu. And then eleventh, the Queen's first Queenslander, C-Tech, Dave Hayter. A very polished performance by those boys in really top company and at times they were really, really good. Twelfth was Event Heritage in Noakes Blue. Thirteenth, the Oak Double Bay Four Pines, Aaron Everett. Fourteen, Fisher Pikel with John O'Whitty on the helm yesterday with uh, normal skipper Jordan Gurness working the bow, but he's back on the tiller today. Fifteenth, the 80 footers bar and restaurant, Pedro Vazzoni. Sixteenth was the kitchen maker, Caesar Stone, Lachlan Steel. Seventeenth, the other Queenslander, named Queenslander, Josh Sloman. And eighteenth was appliances online. And three boats failed to finish, Birkenhead Point Marina, which were in a very good position and having a very good race and they got absolutely hammered by a, one of those great cruise vessels on the harbour, a power boat that pushed right in front of them and absolutely submerged them and they went base over apex and that was the end of their day after having a, a pretty good effort up till then. So they were a did not finish. The Burrowang, Young Henrys, Simon Nern, they also, we saw them yesterday, if you're watching, they broke an upper spreader and uh, so they didn't finish. And the Lazarus Development, another young crew, Hugo Stoner, they failed to finish. And two boats didn't contest yesterday. That was Noakes Youth and Ilve. Noakes Youth skipper Tom Cunnish was on the sheet of Yandu standing in for Jasper Warren, who was ill, but he's back today to add his muscle to uh, the crew of Yandu. So it's, it's grey, it's drizzly, there's not many boats out watching, that's for sure, so that's a good sign for the 18th, a pretty good track looking upwind, and um, so it'll be another good test, but a hard day, Andrew. Two races in, in a strong breeze, it's a good test for boat and crew. Yeah, and, you know, subject to the rain spells providing up and down variability, we, we're thinking that wind speed will, will stay up around that 18 knot average. And it's a, you know, it's a good test, but com fairly compressed course, only 1.4 miles up to the top mark. So it does put a bit of pressure on the crews handling-wise. Just a note from yesterday, Pete, I was t talking to the Noakes boys as well, and they're in the midst of trying to change to a new hull, and they've been swapping the rigs from the old hull to the new hull and back again sort of thing to go sailing. So they were combining of, of uh, rig out of whack in the boat, so <laughs> we can look forward to them being perhaps better today. But um, uh, Sean Langman complaining of uh, instability, shall we say, upwind and uh, unable to find a groove. So, uh, and that does, you know, it's, it's never a pleasant experience when your rig turns a fair way out of whack, which it was. But um, they'll be better today, we would think. Um, Pete, the other thing I guess is that half an hour later, the prediction for a little more wind as towards sun sunset. So sunset, you know, well after seven here in, here in Sydney this time of year, but still possible. OK, well, we're looking back towards uh, Double Bay as a friendly foiling windsurfer decides he's had enough for the moment. There's Bradley's head and a couple of the boats starting to, to come out, I think. So uh, just remembering we are on delay. We're probably a good 20 minutes, half an hour away from the first start of two races today. Um, two races tomorrow, a Monday, so ask your boss for the afternoon off and either come out and watch or watch our live stream. And remembering that if you've got questions, please feel free to leave them and we'll do our best to, to answer them. And if we can't answer them, we'll find someone that can. So, <laughs> <laughs> so also, as I mentioned previously that these all these seven heats of this Australian title which is the hundredth running of the Australian 18 foot skiff title the uh, each race is going to be named after past Australian championship winners and greats 
And today's first race, race two, is named after the Queenslander Vic Vaughan, four times consecutive winner from 1933 to the 1937 season on the, the mighty Aberdare, the, the original galloping ghost. And what a sailor Vic Vaughan was and what a boat Aberdare was. And the second race today, uh, named after another Queenslander, Lance Watt. He was a five-time winner prior to um, Vic Vaughan and then after the Second, War, Second World War, he won in 1949 and 1950. So a couple of famous names added to the, the list of names for this year's races. And it's a lovely touch by the 18-footers to remember heroes of, of the past that have done so much to develop this class. And see, we still race for the Galloping Ghost Trophy in the historic 18. So we race a little fleet of, of recreated 18 footers and uh, the boat called Aberdare is in that fleet and, and uh, that was the Galloping Ghost. And that's quite a, the Australian Championship Trophy is, is that trophy. You know, I think it's wonderful that the traditions are not lost in any sport really. And uh, you've just really got to remember the, the people that dug the well that probably we we're all digging, uh, drinking from. and. Uh, they've certainly names that are synonymous with 18 foot skiff sailing and sailing generally in uh, the harbour as we look at the committee vessel with the red and white AP flag still flying so we're a good half an hour from uh, a start in races two and three of this Australian championship and looking up wind the breeze is quite soft here in uh, Taylor Bay it lifts off here a fair bit as it traditionally does but even looking up into Rose Bay Shark Island, there's not that much wind at the moment. It'd be lucky to be 11 knots, I guess. But Andrew, while we've got a bit of time and uh, this delay is still on, a um, couple of questions I think that people have been asking. Talk, we talk often about VMG and VMC, so you might give us a, an explanation that we can all understand about VMG and VMC. So over to you. <laughs> we can all understand. I'm not sure about that, but. No, look, I mean, for the troops watching, we talk about VMG, and whether you're racing this sort of boat or a big keel boat or a small keel boat or a catamaran, same, same ideas are used. VMG, velocity made good, either directly upwind or downwind, as the case may be. The question that we're applying ourselves to, I think, here is VMG running, so downwind, where you're driving downwind. And the other idea we have is another concept called velocity made course, VMC, which is just... Uh, if effectively um, distance towards the, in the general direction of the course axis but not precisely on the axis. VMG you're obviously trying to get to a predetermined mark or a predetermined point depending on what your race is but VMG used in wind with lured courses such as we're going to have today where driving downwind is indeed required and the committee's endeavour to set the mark directly downwind. Um, now it gets it's not quite that simple because you use a blend of VMG and VMC where the course axis is not aligned exactly with their wind direction. It's pretty typical of ocean racing and indeed of 18-footer racing on Sydney Harbour. And the 18-footer design though solves the puzzle to some degree for the crews because above about 10 knots of true wind for the big rig and about 15 knots for the number two rig, full crew weight on the end of the wing equates with optimum VMG. So optimum VMG and optimum VMC are very similar things and you don't have to make too much of a distinction. But below those wind speeds for the respective rigs, the issue about how much is the crew optimum leverage, aka riding moment, becomes the issue. So below those wind speeds, you'll see crews working without all three on the end of the wing. And so that's, you know, just, you know, You'll see in puffy conditions crews sailing below the direct course to the mark in the strongest wind, which is the textbook principle one of, of, of downwind VMG sailing. And above the direct course to the mark in, in lighter wind, which is kind of principle two, is, and the idea is you go down the run using a very uniform amount, almost a uniform amount of riding moment. And there's a bunch of subtleties associated with that, but that, they're, the, they're the three basic ideas. Okay, well, thank you, Andrew, and uh, just another reminder that we are on postponement. If you're just joining us and expect to see a race underway, we've got a significant postponement of a half an hour at least as a uh, rather strong squall with rain and wind passed over the, the fleet in the rigging area and uh, caused <coughs> a little bit of damage.
significant damage to several skiffs. So the race committee uh, wisely decided that they would postpone the start for races two and three of this Australian Championship. And the fleet now are starting to come out of Double Bay, their rigging area. You can see yesterday's winner there with a W on the sail. That's Andu. So he must have been too damaged, Peter. No, we heard, we heard he may have damaged a mainsail, but that's a good sign to see him out. And very strong performance yesterday. A couple of cap sizes, and he still won by 50 seconds. Andu, which is Seve Jarvan, Matt Stenter and Sam Newton. Very strong combination. And Seve is, of course, a multiple winner of the Australian Championship and also the JJ Giltons. And he'll be trying to stamp his authority on this regatta because he's uh, been away from... 18s for a while, and uh, even this year he's had a bit of health issues with injury and a, a bit of COVID. So he'll be using this as a real workup for the JJs, which are taking place on the harbour here in four weeks' time. And Pete, looking up, we can see right a picture there the Rag and Famish, and they suffered a little bit of damage during the race yesterday as well, and still got fourth. So they're advancing and. Uh, coach asked us to have a look at them actually Jimmy today if we could go on up wind isn't that what Larry Cargill's out here to do that's correct <laughs> well, Larry can go do it <laughs> so what do we look at this breeze there's not much of it here Andrew is there well, at the moment it's as you know Pete it's just the back of the how many jib changes did we do in that rain score mate plenty yeah it's the back of the squall and it just takes a while for the boundary layer to get reset to where it was so all but, skiffs on their second rig and uh, even Yandu when we left the park was uh, had a reef in his mainsail as he did yesterday but at the moment here it's lucky to be oh gee 10 knots but the yeah. Yeah, and, do, and do's coming down in a little bit of a puff but sky's clearing to the south and southeast which would probably tend to think the breeze will lift up a bit but, uh, well still... Pete, if you look at the wind trace for the last 24 hours and the average that the, you know, the bureau of meteorology posts on the sites all around australia more or less um are 10 minute averages, so they don't tend to capture very small squall events or whatever, but they've been sustained above 16 knots for the last 36 hours. So pretty confident that we'll see it revert back to that because that's just driven by the, the gradient between, between the um, big high pressure cells south of Tasmania and the low towards Auckland. Um, so just the interruption caused by the rain squall and the the wind kind of blowing out the back of the squall on the up on, on the upwind side so i think we'll be fine and uh it will be second rig again by the time we start the race well, that and was andu just going down past bradley's head he's first to the, the starting area and here's the rag and famish as we we're talking about earlier coming down with these quite easy to see purple spinnaker with a bit of work being done on that shoot, Pete, over the week. And, yeah, we'll have a look at that. Well, they've got good pressure to come down to the starting area. Harry Price and Josh McKnight and Harry Hall. Yeah, I can sort of, I think we might have 17 boats coming to the line, Pete. So oh, might that's have lost, a good sign. Might have lost a couple, but 17, I think. <laughs> okay, well, any, we'll talk about the crew changes that might have occurred today. We've got John O'Witty has jumped ship. He's gone from Fisher Paykel yesterday. He's on the stick of Ilve Racing. And there's the rag and famish as we talk. Um, he's the only skipper change that we know of, and Tom Quigley comes in on the crew of Shore and Partners. And that's the rag just going past Bradley's head, and there's the rest of the fleet trying to drift out of Double Bay. You can see there's Spinnaker's just hanging quite limply. Um, they're trying to negotiate to get out of the bay and then down to the start area. You can see Tech 2 with the red chute. The boat on the left is... Um, the blue shoot is Lazarus, and then, and then the light blue, the burrowing, and then um, kitchen maker. Kitchen maker. Uh, so they're there. Um, Noakes is there. We can see Balmain Slate there with the orange spinnaker. So 
Yandu's there as well. So that's all a good sign, but they haven't got much breeze. You can see the Burrowang. She's just spinnaker just hanging there, just going up now for a try and get a bit of breeze to get down to the area. But just reminding you, we are on delay um, for another probably 20 or 25 minutes before we get underway in race two, heat two of the Australian Championship. There's a bit, bit, of, bit of poetry. A bit of funny thermal action up there in Double Bay, but look, but the breeze settling back in a bit here, Pete, now. Still. Okay, well, we, we don't want thermal action, we want wind, bucko. Well, same thing. Same thing, is it okay? All right. I'll uh -huh. <laughs> take your word for it. They might all miss the start here. No, I think they'll hold them. But if you, you're starting again now, you'd probably put your big rig in, would you? I don't think you would, Pete. You sure? I'm pretty sure. You'd be a brave man, wouldn't you? Yeah. I think I would. There you go. Pete, I'll get, the, <laughs> I'll get you the wind reading off Kurt L, which is a pretty true read for what's coming. I've got a heavy crew. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> you're, you're self included. <laughs> you're self included. Yes. Yeah, but anyway, it's very light. We're just stationed off Bradley's head in the, the lovely camera cat. There's Burrowing, just starting to get a bit of a rumble on. And the sky clearing down to the south and out to the southwest. So wherever yep. you're watching around the world, we, we say hello and welcome to you. And uh, we've got a very avid watcher from New Zealand. It's Johnny Montgomery. We say hello to you, Johnny. Peter Montgomery's son. He reckons it's compulsory viewing every Sunday. There you go. It's all good. So, hey, hey, Pete, you're allowed one more call on the rig. We've just got the reading from the from the uh, <laughs> bot, from the Colonel uh, channel marker. In fact, 18 to 22. I'll still stick with it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a reef in the big rig. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So hello to you, Johnny Montgomery, and all the best to you and your dad, the great Peter Montgomery. And uh, sad to say we will not see any New Zealanders out here for the JJs with their COVID restrictions in place as we watch the fleet drifting out of Double Bay down towards the start, which will be in Taylor Bay. What do you think of this weather, Jimmy? I'm in two minds, Peter. It's like whether it's those rain squalls are just blowing it out. But, you know, right now, as you said, you'd be on big rig, but yeah. 10 minutes time, would you still want to be with what coming through Kernel? But it's a um, strange old day, that's for sure. Sunshine, big squall well, came through. Well, you know, and Peter, still raining, like 10 miles north of us is still raining. And the, right. the effect takes a while to dissipate, so yeah. don't worry too much. No, well, so we're still a good 25 minutes away from the start of race one today, which is the second heat. 20. Uh, probably... 20, 20 minutes or so. Yeah. But Half let's hope that they'll probably, I think they'll probably give the fleet time to get here to make sure they're all here after this postponement because they've copped a bit of carnage in the park, but now there's no wind to get them down to the starting area. Well, yeah, no, we, we're running a head count on the boats. We'll have another go now. Okay, well, that's the, the view looking back in Double boats. Bay. Well, there's... 20, 22, I just counted. So that's a full float. <laughs> For those that might not have been to Double Bay recently, the last 12 months or so, that's our wonderful camera cat that we do our broadcasting from and our launch the drone from and all our cameras there. It's a fabulous craft. It's a very stable platform, very waterproof, and uh, it's a, a first-class facility that uh, Jimmy Bury has put together. And there's a, a great shot of it. Walk around the outside to take photos. There's a big camera up the top. Talk us about that camera, Jimmy. That looks a bit of cheap equipment. Yeah, nice cheap <laughs> camera, that one. <laughs> Shippo, it's, uh, it's an EX350 camera from England. Um, similar to like the shot over and uh, GSS cameras, just uh, slightly on the cheaper side. Um, fully waterproof, gimbaled, stabilising. Um, all controlled by one bloke on board that controls all the zoom, the spinning it around, uh, everything. So it's uh, it's pretty pretty cool bit of kit. Um, as you said, not cheap, but 
it uh, gets you some some of the most amazing pictures that we can uh, we can bring people at, at this present time. And Jimmy, did you design the, this boat? What, uh, I engaged uh, Scotty Ramson, um, ex camera cat guy, engaged Scotty to um, come and give us a bit of a. Um, Bit of a design study, um, along with Austin Kell in New Zealand, they um, they put the design hats together and came up with this uh, this design. I had a pretty broad brief for them at the beginning. Um, yeah, it was mainly a lot to do with being able to go the ability to film offshore when yep. there's regattas offshore and so forth. So it is in 2C survey for that reason, um, <clears throat> and hence why we've got big high sides compared to the camera cat and. Uh, got everything else, but so, yeah, it's um, so it's an aluminium construction. And yeah, four alloy construction uh, built up at Tweed on the uh, on the Tweed River there um, by Scotty and Jeremy and Johnny, the uh, two of the guys we went head hunting to really good on the on the weld. Um, and yeah, it was quite interesting the build process because the um, they they literally um, they sent each component off to be cut. And it arrived, and it was already bent to shape and everything, and it was literally just like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. Um, but yeah, it was it's a pretty like I'm pretty happy with the boat. It's like you know, it is everything that I ever wanted, and it's uh, you know the red anchor up there on the bow. That's an ode to Kilo. Um, obviously, the old uh, the old camera cat guru himself. Um, Jimmy, the regulatory hurdles that you jumped through on the way, no, they were considerable. <laughs> And in hindsight, you know, you might have started slightly differently, but you've ended up obviously with a formidable product. But um, the the survey requirements and the speed you're allowed to go, I mean, there was you, you, you suggest to me that they'd move the goalposts a bit on you. Uh, look, it was. It's just trying to um, same with anything. Just dealing with government departments. You know, there's a lot of things that they don't allow that you want, and you know, you just got to find a way around it. Um, you know, like the big thing for us is our, our motors are governed um, to 40 knots on here. Like when we'll sea trialling it, we'll well in excess of that. Um, Scotty, was, Scotty was sure that we could get more than that. Um, you know, small other little things that we wanted and we had to, I guess, give a little bit and take a little bit just to get past the, get past survey requirements. But it's, um, you know, it was... It was all good in the end, like, you know, the end product I couldn't be happier with. It's, um, yeah. you know, very comfortable and does everything that, you know, we, want, we need it to do and it's still got the capability of doing more. I can tell you this young Cooper that came out yesterday was highly impressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had uh, Dougie Cameron's young, young grandson on board with us yesterday doing his own little live stream. BMX Cooper, I think he's his, his, his uh, page, but uh, no, he, he had a ball. He, he got off here with a big smile on his face, so... Yeah. You're watching Coops. G'day, buddy. G'day, mate. So, Jimmy, you said top speed, you're limited to 40 knots, are you? Or you yeah. Can... yeah. Yep. Yeah, governed to 40 knots. Okay. Well, if we're going to have to go faster than that, there'll be an 18 that'll be going pretty quick, I think. But... Yeah, well, when we worked uh, Sail GP and one of them went past us on, like, full noise, I'm like, I look down and it, uh, yeah, we're doing 40 knots in those Sail GP boats. Those, those 50s went past me like I was standing still and I was like, wow, that's... Uh, Something else. Yeah. So, Pete, they put all the starting and bottom gate in up in front of us. Yeah, well, we're obviously keen to get underway. And as I said, if uh, you've just joined us, we've had a big postponement, so you haven't missed anything. Um, if you like our coverage, hit the like button or leave us any questions. We'll endeavour to get to you. But a few spectator boats out now, which is good to see they look yachty so they'll know stay out of the way of the racing skiffs and we've got a the ferry out today a full crew on the ferry it's sold out tremendous interest in the championship as we lead into the Giltons and a lot of the sponsors are out today we've got uh, Phil from Birkenhead Point Marina representing them Peter Dean from the Burrowang Hotel he's out with his family Fisher Pikel Richard from Fisher Pikel Dale from Lazarus Group He's on the ferry along with Glenn from Tech 2. So it's wonderful to see these sponsors out supporting their, their boats and uh, obviously delighted to see their name in lights on the sails and 
class that couldn't exist without these marvellous sponsors. There's the fleet. They're all down in, majority down in Taylor Bay. Yeah, Bruce, I, I come out a little bit. I can tell you that the fleet will all be here with 10, you know, with at least 10 minutes to spare. So it would appear that they will start at, at the end of the scheduled postponement. The breeze is just spiking up a little. There's nothing significant. You're 10 knots maximum here. All skiffs on their second rigs or smaller rigs. And uh, we've, I've already mentioned that Yandu has a reef in. I will cast our eye across the rest of the fleet. Blake, uh, Balmain Slake's got a reef in. There we go. Yeah. Noakes Blue will have a reef in. Yeah, and with potentially a little more wind than yesterday, that's probably not a bad thing for those lighter crews. Yeah. But, um, let's there's, see. There's Noakes Blue. And uh, the AP flag's still up. We're just hearing the cheers from the ferry as a few of the skiffs go past. There's Noakes Blue. Royal Oak. Smeg. We look as though we could have a full house, I think. Bree's starting to build up again. So, you're ready to change the jib again, Pete? Yeah, I've gone down to jib <laughs> and a <to> reef. <laughs> so, so, the breeze is starting to come up again. We've got 10 or 12 knots here. Good solid breeze now at the start. Starting area, there's Finport. Good solid performance yesterday from Finport. Keegan York, Bryce Edwards and Phil Marshall, they finished fifth. And they were a shot for fourth or third at one point, but uh, didn't go too well down one of the runs, if I recall correctly. Uh, here we are. So the last boat to arrive at the line is going to be Ilvi. Everybody else here with enough time to... Well, that's John O'Witty. Not like him to leave things to the last minute, but anyway, he'll make it because we're still under postponement flag. There's the rag. Anyway, Pete, look, the, the committee's put the line in. They've put the two bottom rounding marks. So it's a gate rounding at the bottom of the run. The two gate marks about uh, 100 metres upwind of the committee vessel. So it'll be a, a two-lapper, this first race. So up into Rose Bay. The mark's a long way up into Rose Bay. So it'll be getting a good, solid work. Uh, Two solid works, really, and then two runs. They'll finish downwind. Pretty quick, though, Pete. 1.4-mile beat, so the, the beat length will be somewhere in the order of 10 minutes, but uh, and the run about half. So the race duration, somewhere in the 30-minute range. Yeah, and the Navy ship right up the top of the track, leaving the harbour by the look of it, or re-anchoring, perhaps, Jimmy. Well, it came in when we headed out in the squall, and now it's... Sort of looked like it went to Naval 2, Naval Boy 2. Now it looks like it's likes a view a bit better from Point Piper, whether they're going to go drop anchor out the front of Point Piper. Yeah, that would be a very unusual spot. I don't know really what he's doing, but anyway. So, boys, we've got it. Uh, haven't got starting signals yet. Which way are we going? Up, up the beat. No, yeah, nowhere near the Navy boat. That's, no, uh, the that's Navy for sure. Ship. That's for yeah. sure. So, that's the first, first message. First ob obstacle. Andrew, left, right. Come on, Bucko, we've got to redeem ourselves. <laughs> you had a shocker yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I'm not oh. sure it was as bad as you thought. <laughs> well, I still think that in the ebb tide that the conservative thing is to go right, Pete, but maybe half a step, half a step up, perhaps. So not the full boiled all the way to double bay type right, but two thirds of that. But uh... well, there's the start boat, and I think there will be some concern on this naval vessel. But as looks as though he probably just, as Jimmy said, he came in about half an hour ago, 40 minutes ago, did a bit of a circle up near Clark Island, and there's the He's manly quite... ferry in the foreground and the naval ship moving slowly in the background up. Point Piper area. Well, Pete, the puzzle continues in that he's appears to have used his anchor and he's now washing the mud off it. You know, he's got the seawater spraying out of the anchor hawser pipe. 
So what's that tell you? He's well, not going to re-anchor. It tells think. you that he's not likely to re-anchor. So it's a bit oh. strange, isn't it? Oh, well. He might come in to watch the 18s race. Or it might be too bumpy outside to get sick. <laughs> you know, I don't know. We're, We're in the Navy. Navy. We're anyway. It's Lazarus Developments there, Pete. The, the Hugos. Yep. Young crew that have stuck at it this year and done pretty well. So the only question mark we have to see is who's on the sheet on Noakes. As um, we heard, Ed Powies may not be sailing, but um, and he, David Gilmore, could be stepping in for him. But we haven't confirmed that one way or the other. But they're definitely out here. We saw them out here earlier, and a lot of the skiffs have gone upwind, just having a look at things, and a few of them now running back down with spinnakers and. Oh, there's Noakes, he's a fair way upwind. There's the famous 18-foot ferry, the Royale. With a full house on board. Navy ship is moving slowly. It looks like down harbour or out of the harbour, rather. Out of the harbour. Yeah, it's a funny speed that he's travelling at, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's hardly. Hardly rapid transit. Hardly quick, but no. uh, anyway, he sh if he keeps that speed, he should be clear of the race course in about. <laughs> A bit shorter than that, but anyway, there's a bit of rumblings on the start boat. That looks as though there's officials getting out towards the flag area to lower the AP and hoist the starting flags. We're in Taylor Bay, just on the eastern side of Bradley's Head for race two of the Australian Championship. Hello, there's a sound signal. AP down. The AP is down. So we're getting close to <clears throat> the second heat of this... 100th Australian 18 foot skiff title. Sea Tech, the Queenslanders, who did very well yesterday, finished 11th. And they were in the, always around in the top 10 throughout. They got a very good start. Ben Roxburgh and Elliot Mayer crewing for skipper Dave Hayter. And this breeze here has lifted off again a bit here, Andrew, hasn't it? Yeah, a bit. Too many grey things in the way, Pete, at the moment. I think yes. there's a bit of that. There's a couple of big ferries and the and the Navy vessel, so give it five minutes and it might be pretty stable, but the first beat will go to the guy that finds the most wind, more or less, in this sort of condition. So, let's see. We will see. Okay. Okay, five minutes. So five minutes to go for the first race today. Don't, if you just joined us, you haven't missed anything. We've been on a solid postponement. And we've got 4.40 to go. Andrew, where's the line? What are we thinking here? Pretty good line? Beautiful line. Yeah. And I think, I regret to inform you, Mr Shipway, that I think we'd still have to go right. <laughs> it's going to be less wind on the left, I think, for a little while here. Even though there's a good puff up towards Nielsen, the ship squashes a wind for you know, perhaps two minutes and leave some vortices behind it. And you can see a little more wind coming down now from the vicinity of Shark Island. Okay, so you're going to go right, Jimmy. I'm going to go straight through the middle of the island. <laughs> <laughs> Landing wheels down. Landing wheels. <laughs> Good on Amphibious you. vehicle. <clears throat> okay, well, Andrew, I'm going to stick with my big rig. <laughs> and I'm going to go with you. I'm going to go right. There you go. Okay. For the first time ever, I agree with you. Nice work. It's only taken... <laughs> Next thing you two will be having beers together. <laughs> it's only, only taken 30 years to get it right. <laughs> 50. 50 years. Okay. 
No, not 50. So, okay, three minutes, 30 to go. At least 40, there's, though. There's yeah. Smeg, second yesterday. Tech 2, third yesterday, defending champion. And behind them is Noakes Blue. And we're just trying to find Noakes and see who their crew is, but nonetheless, they're out here. And there's yesterday's winner, Andrew, looking as though he wants the pin end. Which, oh, so three minutes to go. Now I'm going to go left, Andrew. I've changed my mind. I'm going to get down the pin end and go hard left. Okay. Well, you've got to there's get Noakes. And what are we seeing here? No, Dave Gilmore's there. So, uh, is that yep. Dave? Yes, it is Dave on the sheet. So, okay, Ed Power's not sailing. And David Gilmore comes in for him on the sheet. So, Pete, you can see the first good lines of puff that's come behind the ship now. It's pretty even, actually, across the track. You probably need to stand on starboard for about one minute, I would think, before you take on a port, okay. if you were going right. How's that? Okay, well, there's Andrew. He's obviously made his intentions clear. Yesterday's winner, he wants the pin in, yep. which would signify that he probably is going to go left. Except he's Unless turning, he cross turning around and coming back on port. Yes, anyway, he's going to stay down there, I would think. Two minutes, ten to go. Yep. So... There's Fleet being pretty respectful. And we've got, a, what, about 11, 12 knots? Maybe a bit more? A bit more in the puff. Yeah, yeah. That's 14. So okay. just in the, toward the mid-range at the moment. 150. And... Wow, and tech two. Wow, coming up towards the boat on port at full noise. And off camera, got a lot of interested parties out here in spectator boats and ribs and that which is great to see and there's the fleet 130 to go there's yandu with the reef in the mainsail the red and blue oval 18 footer bar and restaurant up here close to the committee boat noakes will be highest at the committee boat he's off camera at the moment got about a minute 10 to go minute 15 well behaved at the moment lazarus might have paid for the windward end here pete <laughs> Yeah, that's Marcus Ashley Jones. Okay. There's one minute. One minute. Are they going to hold back? They're very close at the lured end. But they they're pretty good, pretty good at stopping these guys, so we'll see. Noakes is trying to get back on. He's on port and he's going to come in star, but he's going to be committee boat high. Noakes, I think. I think Birkenhead Point might be over down at the Lured End. 35 seconds. <laughs> 25 seconds to go. Okay. Andrew's a bit locked in there. Pliance is on lines the closest to the pin. Above him is Birkenhead. We've got 10, 12 seconds to go. Ooh, Burrowang's well advanced in the middle of the line. He's going to be close, or Birkenhead's going to... He's popped out. Birkenhead's over. Three, two, one, go. Wow. Oh, there's a lot over. Yep. There's a lot That's over. And what a general. That's a general recall, yeah. Okay, geez, Smeg got hammered there, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Three seats in row F. Yeah, so Smeg. Yeah, they all, they all hit the pedal just a five seconds too early. Still. And it's a general recall. Wow, we get our money's worth, Pete. Yep, so after a long delay, we're going to have a further delay. And pressure building. Yeah. So we saw a boat with a insignia of Vintec out there on his sail. That is Noakes Youth. Just reminding you, that is Noakes Youth. If you saw, thought there was a boat Vintec that you don't know, well, you're, you're correct, it's Noakes Youth. They might have been a victim of the torn mainsail, perhaps, Pete. It could well have been, but yep. uh, this breeze, the sky clearing a bit further. The breeze up 12 knots plus here, and we're general recall. So, oh, the eye flag, eye flag, eye flag going up. So you've got to be very careful now. So what did that look like, even though it was a false start, Andrew? Which, which end looked favoured? Was 
pretty even, wasn't it? I think it's a pretty good line, yeah. Mm. I, maybe vaguely favouring the guys at the boat end in, in terms of distance towards the windward mark, but, but not a big deal either way. Freedom to tack, probably more important than anything else still. And find the first puff, and here it is from the right, Peter. How about that? Well, that's, that's where so I would have gone. <laughs> that's where I would have gone. Yeah. Surely. <clears throat> but um, sky clears, wind rebuilds, you know. Yes, yeah, it is now. A lot of white caps now appearing again. So yeah. I think it be a pretty nice day, I think, now. Nice second sail breeze. I went back and changed my rig okay. <laughs> very quickly. Okay. Yeah. There you go, Bucko, on the back of the committee boat. 130 course axis, 1.2 NM long. Yeah. Yeah, good breeze here. See the eye flag, the yellow flag with a black dot. And the red flags get dropped at one minute intervals. To give the skiff some idea, but most of them have got starting watches or starting instrumentation that gives them a gauge to how far they're away from the line or how far they've got to go to the line. We've got four minutes 20 to go on the second race, second heat. First <coughs> race today, two lapper. What do you think about 1.4, did you say, Jimmy? Is that the length one, of the. 1.2. 1.2 miles. 1 three, zero. Yeah, 130. So, yeah. south easterly course up into Rose Bay from the start here in Taylor Bay. He did say he was trying to get 1.4, but it, land yeah. inhibits you. Land inhibited yeah. at the top. He ran, ran out of water. Yeah. So, three minutes 50. So, the fleet a bit dawdly coming back, in fact. <clears throat> well, I think you'll probably find, Bucko, everyone was just sort of just trying to get their gears set yeah, because no. it's the first time we've had a little bit of breeze back since these guys have actually got on the water. Yeah, you're right, I think. But you wouldn't normally be 100 yards up into the start line no. with three minutes to go, would you? No, not, not ideal, but not ideal. they'll all get back, I think. Yeah, no, they'll yeah. all get back. But 3.20 to go. So we're watching Smeg go around the back of the committee boat. What's Andrew doing? He's coming down this end. First time he was... He was Towards the pin, but he didn't. He wasn't the uh, closest to the pin. Three minutes, just coming up to three minutes now. Yeah, the breeze, right and good pressure here. 14 knots. Really good pressure. Best we've seen for a long while since that rain squall went through and made things a bit difficult. Two minutes 40. It's Meg testing the lured end there. <clears throat> yeah. And, and he, he looked like he's shaving up for a poor tacker, Pete. Well, Andrew came up, had a look at the committee boat. Now he's racing down towards the, the port end. 2.20 to go. Remembering Andrew won, Andrew won yesterday, Seve Jarvan. Smeg was second and Tech 2 third. So Tech 2 going to some trouble here off screen, but going to some trouble to position themselves right up at the committee boat end. And the fleet generally towards this end of the line more, Pete. So, yeah. the, so fleet, the fleet believing that the, this end is f favourable. 150 to go. A seven heat series. We've got two races today, two tomorrow. Yes, that's right, on the Monday. And then the final two races next Sunday. Now, yeah, we'll, Tech we'll, 2 not liking the big pack up the top. No. One and a half to go. Dialed himself down towards the lower third of the line. Andu lining up for the, for the pin end. Pin end, yep. I don't know where did Smeg end up in all of that. was down the pin end for a while. I don't know where he ended up. But anyway, we've got just under a minute, uh, over a minute to go. Stand by for the next flag. And Hooter, one minute to go for the second heat. Oh, Smeg's up the committee boat end. Andrew say, wants the pin, I think. Smeg is up here, tick two, about a third of the way or a quarter of the way up. 
And a bit of a tangle with the Smeg and the Lazarus. Who would have thought? Oh. Wow. Smeg got himself out of that, I think. 35 seconds to go. There's that. This is Noakes' youth. And the Noakes' youth got a good shot at the win with any to get out of the tag. He's got to get out of irons first. Yeah, you got the jib backed, have they? Yep. Just coming to 20, 20 seconds. seconds. That's, yep. They're well behaved this time, I think. Yeah. E e except for the Fisher and Pike were going backwards in the middle there, Pete. Yeah. A couple of blokes in irons. Andu, put the pedal down. down. Yeah, Hammer absolutely. Down. If he gets this timing right, he's going to be good, I think, Andu. Down at the pin end. Five, four. Oh. Noakes Youth off. Oh. Noakes Youth got to come back, I think, Pete. He was over, I think. The rest are right. What's he done yet? Individual. Individual, I think it would be only Noakes Youth with Vintech on the sail. Yep. I think everyone else was pretty clean. Fisher Pikel got absolutely buried and missed it. Um, Royal Oak, a nice start up at the committee boat. Yandu and Smeg well up at the committee boat as well, but it was Andu down the pin end that really pushed the pedal first and got a great start. So he's off and flying towards Steel Point. A few boats starting now to get a tack and get out of the dirty air. Sea Tech and Kitchen Maker are two of them going on port as quick as they can. They were deep and buried behind the majority of the fleet. But the fleet, well, all on starboard except about two or three that have had to bail out. Yeah, but Pete, the breeze high right, so as far right as we've seen it since we left the dock. So the leader is clearly Royal Oak Four Pines, who started second down from the committee boat. With his bow up, well up, and at that end it was Smeg, Noakes and Yandu. And we'll try and find out who was over and let you know, but we looking at it, it looked like Noakes Youth. Whether there are any more over, I don't know. It was hard to see, but the fleet are away, mostly on starboard tank. And good pressure in front of us, Pete, too. Really good. Yeah. 13, 14 knots. Full biff for the boys. And the boat that got the lured end, the pin end, is Andu. And he's absolutely flying in towards Nielsen Park. But here's the guys that started towards the committee boat end. There's Tech 2, the red hole there. We further to the left, most further left, that's Andu. We can see him, he's really got that pedal down. Well, he started extremely well, didn't he? At yeah, he, was, he was quick yesterday upwind and he's yeah. quick again today. Good breeze now coming out of Rose Bay. It's probably 14, 15 knots as Andu tacks. So he's been first to tack of the leading group and he looks as though he'll be pretty close to crossing the fleet here. There he goes. Yeah, I don't think he'll cross no, the I don't lead. No, he won't cross the leading group no now, leading group. looking at it. Yeah. The Burrowang's going to cross him. No, there's going to be a, a gaggle of boats in front of him. Oh, he's oh, taking a few Gloria. sterns. Wow. Behind Tech 2. Hot moves, boys. <laughs> uh, so, yes, he didn't come back on such a good one there. As Andrew said, the breeze was in the right and punished him, being hard in the left. Yes, it's got to minimise your, your punishment there, don't you? Just sort of take one back and well, yeah, he, he, stay, pretty, stay in contention with the pretty hard, touch of the run. Pretty hard to sail on port at the moment, you Yeah, know, it, it is. It didn't matter what you would have think, you know. Running up to a bit of land. Yeah. Well, the leaders are going to lay well up into a bit of tide relief on the eastern side of Rose Bay here. Tide ebb. We made a big feature of that, but it's certainly reasonably important. It's two skiffs with a reef in. Got the Balmain Slake. Wow. And, oh, wobbly, wobbly, too wobbly. Bang. I was going to say, Pete, he's tacking with some vigour. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably too much vigour. Too much speed of turn. Too much speed of turn. Mate. Henry Larkin, Max Paul and Flynn Toomey. Yeah. OK, there's Noakes. He's and Noakes Blue behind it. Doing a very good job. Sean Langman and then Noakes Blue, Yvette Heritage. Just no. haven't, haven't tacked since the start. They've come off the starting line. Just behind them, if we go see them in a moment, is Smeg. And to windward of the Smeg is the Royal Oak. So, and, and Burrowang going back on port behind those four. So this, this group could be the leading group, I think. 
Probably the Royal Oak is close to the lead. Yep, the Royal Oak Four Pines is close. We'll be watching Noakes tack. Smeg oh. will cross them. And they're just doing a little duck on Noakes. Little dive away on Port Tack. No right of way. Smeg going right into the shore and good breeze coming out. Good 15 knots here. But it's the Royal Oak. Aaron Everett, John Cooley and Charlie Gundy doing a terrific job. So interesting. But uh, they finished 13th yesterday. Yeah, Smeg was second. I had a Smeg will have to tack in about three, two, one. There they go. And they will right. go behind Smeg. the Royal Oak. They yep. don't even have to duck. The Royal Oak is lead, good lead. So they tack now in good pressure. A lot of pressure with too much jib on. Oh, the a Royal Oak. Pressure with oh, too the much jib, jib on. The jib, the jib, boys, the jib. It's all yeah. over. Bang. Oh, so wow. Well, needed That's two disappointing. Two inches of jib at least. Yes. You Not see the jib just pinned in and just yeah. tip them over. Well, that's a very unfortunate for those boys. Had, had a great leg off the starting line. But if there's going to be an easy way to capsize, that's probably the best way. Get it straight up and get back into it as Andu comes across in front of them. So Andu is trying to wiggle his way up in to the top two or three, but Smeg and Noakes sailing, or Noakes would be close to the lead. They're the leading group, so everyone's gone left of the island here, Andrew. Yep. And Noakes Blue also in, in the top five. Yeah. So it's quite a surprising degree of split in the fleet here, in fact. Breeze. A fair way right on the right edge again. Yeah, there's the Queenslander, Sea Tech, going into almost the point. We'll watch see. them. Their tack, tack is nice, good. nice, In very high, nice. Pretty nice left too. Pretty high left, yeah. yeah. So all pretty good. Lazarus, Marcus, Ashley, Jones, always gives us the thrills and spills and. That's today's sponsor, the Lazarus Group. He's getting tacking now. If he gets a left-hander that the Sea Tech got, he'll be right back in the picture here. Okay, well, that, they're the right-handed boats. There's Noakes sailing coming back around Shark Island. He's now getting out to the right. And uh, the boat that's a couple of boats that are well back are Yandu and uh, Tech 2. Kitchen maker just tacking right up on the Nielsen Park shore. So they're about you know, two thirds the way up this beat. The, the mark, the weather mark, is right up in Rose Bay. And uh, it's a, a race between Smeg, Noakes, and Noakes Blue are the three leaders. And then uh, hot on their heels is yesterday's winner, Andu. You can just see Andu there. But left of screen is Noakes Blue. And that's Noakes coming across on starboard. He will be pretty close to the lead, either Noakes or Smeg. And Noakes is still on port, Pete. Oh, he's still on port, sorry. He is going up into Point Piper, the eastern side of Point Piper. And well, the Smeg on a butte left-hander. The breeze just has turned left quite a bit in the last three, four minutes. It's a good pressure. We've got a good 14 knots here. And at that angle, Smeg will lead. Yep. We still haven't heard... Probably very close. We still haven't heard who was over at this stage. So we're assuming all, all of the leaders are in play. So we'll just see now. Smeg is going to converge with Noakes, who've just tacked. And it looks like Noakes on starboard will be the leader, I think. Yes, he will be. They've taken a bit of a header on the Smeg. And you can see Noakes left of screen. It's going to lead at the moment by not much. Perhaps 10 seconds. And Yvette Heritage doing a great job in third place in Noakes Blue.
So, Yvette, here it is, Tony Cloud and James Turner on the Nokes Blue having a bit of a blinder. Snake had to duck, Pete, so, yeah. so it's, it's close. It's a, yacht, in it. it's a yacht race. But you'd expect Nokes to be able to lead at the mark, I would think, because Smeg's now overstood. <laughs> yes, big time. <laughs> Get the jockey pole up to come in. That's right. Wow, that's a big bit of right hand, though, isn't it? My goodness. And Nokes Blue's just going to be short, Pete. Yes, he's, he's tight. Or maybe not. Oh, he, OK. There's the lead-up. Nokes. Sean Langman. Whoa, hang on, right, boys. Josh Probeski and Dave Gilmore on the sheet today, standing in for Ed Powers. Yes, Nokes Blue, well short. Smeg got plenty of gas to come round with. So There's Dave, Nokes setting. Dave, oh. Dave Gilmore having a bit of a busman's tour, isn't he? Yep. On Smeg the... comes round, port rounding. It's all good. And Noakes Blue still got a, a bit to do, but clear third. So another good effort by Smeg up that beat. He was second yesterday, second at the moment. And Noakes Blue will be third, and Andu fourth, and then Yandu fifth. Good recovery by John Winning in the Yandu. Round goes Andu. And plenty of wind coming. <coughs> nice little squall just went over the top of the camera. Yeah, boat. oh, yeah. it's Yandu. And this will be dangerous here, guys. Is C Tech, the Queenslanders. Good job, those boys. Again, here comes C Tech, a uh, Tech 2 rather. And the man that can ride down this puff will make some yards. Jack Fisher Pikehall. Bit of water scale. Next, just above Finport. Then Marcus and the Lazarus. Oh. Thrills and spills here at this weather mark. Oh, the Royal Lake having had a swim. Yeah, still, still there. Then the Burrowang. Then the 80 foot the of bar race. restaurant. Plenty of wind here at this weather mark up in Rose Bay. So a four leg, four lap, a four leg course. Two windwards, two leewards as the Rag and Famish goes round. Oh, the Royal Oaks in for his second swim of the day. Borrowing well, wow, did really well to avoid that. Yeah. So did the 18 footer, 18 -footer right. but he's, he's still not square. out of trouble no. for them, though. He's wobbly, he's wobbly. Oh, very wobbly. <laughs> wobbly as Ilde comes round. Oh, oh, poor old 18 footer bar and restaurant. He did bloody well to miss them, though. Yeah. Shore and Partners is deep. Kitchen maker then, then Noakes Youth. Yeah, the tip yeah. over 18 footer is about a 20 metre wide thing that you've. You know, yes, hard to avoid. Hard to avoid. Just watching the Noakes youth set their spinnaker, the blue spinnaker. Just ahead of them is Shore and Partners. And then the tail enders are made up of the Queenslander and the Balmain Slake. Wow. Good puff to go downwind, too. Yeah, so looking downwind, Tech Two's got up to third, probably Noakes Blue's still fourth. But plenty, plenty full amount of wind, Peter, down past Nielsen Park. Yes, they're all going down the eastern side of Shark Island, between Shark Island and Steel Point. No one's gone out the other side at this stage, although Shore and Partners might be rolling the dice a bit to go that side. That's him with it. Red spinning going off camera at the moment with a white spinning, a blue spinning. Lazarus. On the, that's Lazarus and the Barrowang. There's Balmain Slake in a good one. Nice pressure. Good breeze here now. The first of two downwind legs. Just Down. looking, looking at Andrew Pete over to the right. Sorry if you were not on screen, but um, he looks like he might be a bit deep on the ley line. <laughs> Travelling with 
travelling with Tech 2 and uh, they're pretty close to the lay and Andrews are further 200 metres downwind or to the right looking downwind. That's Andu in the background, he's gone a long way into Steel Point and he's, as Andrew says he's going to be pretty tight on this lay line, if not he's overcooked it. Just off camera, we've got the Burrow Wagon a bit of trouble. Trying to capsize to windward. There's Tech 2, he's judged it pretty well. They go around a gate at the bottom here. They can go around either left or right hand mark. They can choose. I think we'll probably have a new leader looking at the fleet, and that will be... Smeg has got himself up in the first place. He's just dropping the Spinnaker now. Noakes dropped a fair way back then. So Smeg 2 will lead quite comfortably. He's around the Lewin gate now. He went the left-hand mark looking downwind. Tech 2's got himself up into third. Yandu, a close fourth with Andu. He did a good job, Yandu, down that beat, that no run. Yandu had to drop early. That's Noakes without the spinning. He's going left hand. And Andu, as well. Andu, two cell crash died, got it done. Okay, he's gone to the right hand mark, Andu. Yep. Rounds yep. about the same time as Noakes, so you'd have to say pretty close for second. And. Yandu goes round left hand mark. People with tech two, so but clearly the other mark's favoured. Yes, yeah, so it is. So round that marker was Smeg led, then Noakes, Andu, Yandu, and Tech Two as C Tech will be next around the Fisher Pikel, and then booming in with the purple spinnaker is the Rag and Famish. <clears throat> they went the other side of the island, Pete. They did, yep. Yeah. Burrowang would have survived a near cap size, still upright. Yvette Heritage uh, off camera. About to go on the tide. I think so. Think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Oh, no, she's got to run. Have oh, to run. she's out the back of the miss. boat. <laughs> oh, so she, behind the wing bar. She's fallen off. Hasn't gone round the mark. Oh, they've got a bit of work to do there. Bad luck. It's got too high on that mark. There's, Bit of yelling, there's a bit of action on all the marks here. There's two marks. We've got Shore and Partners. Yeah, they're going to be deep sea diving in a minute, I think. Are they? Yes. Stick with it, boys. Oh, it's crew to Leward, crew to Winward. Somehow they got the. Oh, no, they haven't. The Spinnaker's still up. Oh, dear. There's the Balmain Slate coming in. It's all happening, as they say here. <laughs> the Shore and there goes the Shore and Partners. Yep. Yeah. They've taken the deep dive. So this is the final beat, up to Rose Bay and then the run to the finish. Balmain Slake and 80 foot of bar and restaurant. Breeze down a little bit, Andrew. This probably lifts off a bit of Taylor Bay where this mark is. Still got a good one, 12, 13 knots. It's up and down a bit. But Pete, uh, a bit hard to make sense of that first beat, in fact. Yes. Even in hindsight. <laughs> Still. You know, the degree to which the boat separated and the time differences of the top mark for a one mile beat were pretty considerable, weren't they? Tech 2 just tacking, C Tech in the foreground. Again, another good performance by these Queenslanders. And in the, in the distance, on starboard, is the leader, Speg, Michael Coxon, Ricky Bridge, and Zach Barnabas.
So what Smeg did, she went round the left-hand marks and went out on port for a fair way before she tacked. Andu went round the right-hand mark, looking downwind, and just made one big leg two-thirds the way across to Steel Point. And he looks as though he's got himself very close to second, Andu. Noakes and Yandu are up in a lot to windward, but Andu is second, I'm pretty sure. I think so, yes. Yeah. He's smoking along as he did yesterday, upwind, but it's going to be close with Noakes and Andu. Tech two's back in fifth place. Yandu is fourth. Yeah, Tech 2 3 doesn't look very good again today. Yeah, the little discreet little adjustments to all the diagonals probably haven't quite gone far enough by looking at the cross coming up here between Noakes and Andu. Noakes will cross ahead. Just. So that's second and third there as we're looking yep. at it. Just yep. a little dip on Andu, so yep. he'll come back with starboard tank rights. So and that's Yandu in there close enough. So Noakes would be feeling pretty encouraged by that, Pete. They would a good because breeze. They were pretty untidy at the bottom there. They had to drop early and sort of run to the Mark Main and Jib. Breeze up again here at Shark Island. They're on the up towards the eastern side of Shark Island. Breeze, what, 14 knots, I guess. A bit more, Pete. Yeah, yeah. perhaps perhaps 16 in the in the middle of the puff yeah. there. A big split in the fleet. Smeg gone way into Nielsen uh, Park shore. See them in a moment. There they are, right in on the shore. Andrew right up on. Shark Island. Well, and a bit more current than on the first beat, Pete, so it's hard to figure out what's going on here, really, but um, the breeze not as bendy as it was on the first beat, I don't think. Have a look at Tech 2's rig here. Looks all right, sort of. A little bit short of luff curve. <laughs> So you'll see there's uh, Noakes in vying for second spot with Andrew just above him. But here's the cross now. Smeg leads quite comfortably coming off the shore, Nielsen Park, western side of Nielsen Park. A nice, nice lead to Michael Coxon now. Both Andu and Noakes and Yandu going in to that shore, as is Tech 2. Most of the fleet on starboard, with the exception of the race leader, Smeg. So they've got to go round the Rose Bay boy, the weather mark, and then run to the finish. At the moment, spec two, a very comfortable lead. That is comfortable, Pete. That's uh, 45 seconds or so, at least. And do a terrible tack. <clears throat> yeah. So that probably puts the advantage well back to Noakes there. Yeah. Noakes pretty clean. <coughs> and we still haven't got any news on who was uh, recalled. No, not as yet. Still no, waiting on a message to come from Longy on the start boat. We'll wait, wait to wait to uh, after the finish. I'm sure we'll find out. Yes, but I. I... Be nice to know as soon as we can. We don't think it was any of this leading group, but you never know. That's the view looking back from the drone, but this is the on-water shots of Andu and Noakes buying it out for second spot with Smeg. A good, what's he, 40 seconds ahead here, Andrew, perhaps? I think a little more, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. maybe. Yeah. Yandu, a solid fourth. Tech 2 fifth, and then the Rag and Famish coming into it as well. He's about fifth or sixth. And Pete, in the right hand side of the bay here, quite a bit of wind. Yeah, not too much in the left. But Andrew will be first to get into this good puff, although Smeg's just starting to wiggle his way into it. But here's really good pressure for Andrew. He's going to get this well before Noakes. Get this big crew getting stuck into it now. Getting their elbows out. There's a few 
few spectator boats could get in the way up here at this weather mark. Let's hope not. It's a great shot of uh, Andu. So here's the bowman looking through the window. <laughs> There's the two checking for stuff. Leaders. The first is definitely Smegs, whether Andu can cross Noakes. Smeg tax for the lay. And there's a spectator catamaran is going to just get out of his way. I think Noakes will be close to second here. Close, Peter. Yeah, Andu. Yeah, no, he's easily second. Resolutely. Yeah, well. So that reef's clearly dialed into the, about the right place, isn't it? On spec there, rounding the weather mark for the last time. He'll run to the finish. Two laps, four legs. Oh. Wobbly old tack on the nokes off camera, but specs around. Da David Gilmore stuck on the old hook, occupational hazard of the part time she down, we'll call it. Okay, there's. Andu just ahead of him, Noakes. And this will be a good battle for, you'd think, second. So perhaps a bit less of a lead than we thought, eh? Yes. This is Puff Noakes. again every time we're at the top mark, just yeah, lands Noakes on the water right here. Second. Right up his exhaust pipe is Andu. And we'll run down with his leading group. Sheet on notes will be a good set. Both good sets. Both pretty good. <clears throat> oh, come on, Joshy. Strap her on, son. Swing her down. And just looking back, um, Yandu will be fourth and Tech 2 will be fifth. But anyway, we're on this leading group. No second at the moment. Yandu has jived away. So they're going to roll the dice a little to try and get into second spot. Noakes in good pressure. David Gilmore on the sheet for Ed Powies today. They're running away on star, but in the background, Andu in a good gust on port, running in towards Shark Island. There they go, there's Andu on port, jive. So this is gonna be a good finish here. Where's our crosswind position line indicator, Peter? But it's right. The guys on this side are headed on starboard, and the guys on the other side are headed on port. So probably come out nearly even, one would think. Subject to how much wind they get. So are we VMG or VMC? Yeah. We're VMG. Peter. Okay, more or less. less. More or less. <laughs> Fastest way to the bottom mark. Yeah. There goes Smeg, jiving. Nice jive, too. But there's Andu down, running down the eastern side of Shark Island. So, to Andu in a little more pressure now than, than uh, no, no, yeah, I think it, Andu's got himself in a second here, I think. We'll see. That's a great shot. Two skips at full biff. Yep. Nice bit of compression here against the headland, but here goes Noakes setting up the job. Big test for the yeah. stand-in sheet end, but here we go. Now Andrew will be ahead of them, I think. Well, Andrew's, oh, jobs. Andrew's job as well. Okay. So that tells you he's feeling a bit vulnerable. And yes. look where the bow on Noakes is. Yeah, Noakes has got the bow down, you're right. Yeah. Okay, the race is on here for second. You'd think Smeg's about 300 metres from home, maybe a bit more. Yeah, they won't but catch Smeg. <laughs> They've all got good pressure, 15 knots. Running to the finish now, the second heat. The Vic Vaughan trophy for the second heat, and there's Noakes in a screamer. Be very close up, Pete, still. In the distance, it's Andrew just flying down at spec. We've got Andrew, oh, we're off Andrew at the moment. We're on Noakes, hang, trying to hang in the second, but at the moment it's yeah, Andrew in a good header, absolute header. We'll get to him in a moment. 
Speck trying to defend this lead. Oh, they won't catch Snake. I don't think they will unless there's a major kerfuffle on the Speck. Speck's lying to finish. I think. But Andrew's made a big impression. He's up to windward on his hip. Yeah, Speck man. looks comfortable now. Speck comfortable VMD run of the committee boat, Peter. Great job by Michael Cox and Ricky Bridge and Zach Barnabas. Second yesterday, first in today's first race, second heat. Yeah, good job, Speck. Okay, let's go back up. Yep. And now... Yeah, you go up. Don't so, amazing, Peter. Speck and, 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 and do late from there. Yeah, and they've, they've put a a good 50, 50, and 50 seconds into... And notes coming notes at us on the face the, of a squall. Wow, look at it. The Sal Wesley rig set... Wow, down there's plenty here. Going back to the right and re-exerting itself in a oh, substantial fashion. And all the fleet are flying downwind and overstood. This might be a bit interesting here with the powerboat wake here on the... or the ferry wash with... So Tech 2 and Yandu coming at it oh, at 25 at knots. Maximum speed, maximum pressure. Tech 2 throwing everything at the old fella, John Winnie, but he's hanging in there. Great stuff. Oh, Ooh. little flapping Yandu. Oh, Tech 2 trying to get underneath him. Yeah, good luck with that. <clears throat> To, oh, but he's yelling and screaming. Oh, well, Tech 2 has only passing lanes on the he's high side. To, to get up to the mark. Yeah. Yandu will get fourth. There he is, around the mark. Tech 2 in the background. Oh, oh the high, rag. High rest stuff on the rag. Rag, <laughs> drop the shoot. A Yandu fourth. Tech 2 fifth. Rag next. Then oh, the rag's going to go to the top. Oh, the rag. No, they saved it. He's just got to get up there to get around the mark, which he will. This breeze just fresh, and look at this, bringing the fleet home now. 30-degree right-hander, and uh, double, well, well, not double the strength, but plus, plus six knots. Good stuff. Here's the rest of the fleet. This is Event Heritage with the blue shoot on the Noakes Blue. They're all way under the finishing line here. Finport screaming, but oh, no, it's Noakes Youth. <laughs> Noakes Youth with the blue shoot. Fintech, sorry. And all these guys struggling to lay the finish. Oh, some great shots here. They're all airborne here. Wow. Finport. Seatech, he's got to get in there. He's going to be eighth, Seatech. What's going to happen here? Finport's going to have to drop or not, mate? No, I think no, Finport right. will make it. He's OK. So will the kitchen maker. Yeah. Well, the kitchen maker told me they were going to get going to get uh, in the top ten. There you go. So, well, he's tenth. There you go. <laughs> That's their Just behind right. them, the light blue spinnaker, the burrow angle, plenty on the top of screen there, middle of the screen. Yeah, they've all brought this puff down. It's plenty of it, too. Well, on the barrel wing, she's struggling. So there, the barrel wing just getting around the, the finishing mark. Best breeze we've had all day here. Point Marina, they've come back a bit though, deep early, but it'll be about 14th or 15th. And uh, they've just pipped the Queenslander. So,
excitement plus again for the second heat of the Australian titles. Provisionally, this is, we must say provisionally, there was a general, re uh, sorry, an individual recall after a general recall. and We don't know who was over, but we don't think it was any of the leading group, but you never know. So uh, why I say provisionally, Smeg was first, Andu second, Noakes third, Yandu fourth, Tech two fifth. As we're watching Noakes blue, Yvette with a tear and a spinnaker, Yvette Heritage coming down, squalls just eased a little bit as they cross the, uh, come to cross the line. So, repeating, Tech 2 was 5th, Rag and Famish 6th, Lazarus 7th, Sea Tech 8th, ninth was Finport, and 10th was the Kitchen Maker. <coughs> so, what do we make of all that, boys? Andrew? Hey, Chitz, can we get the, pit, get the camera on Tech 2? They're just doing some rig adjustments here. We might learn something. Yeah, Full zoom. Okay, so guys in the boat adjusting the diagonal stays, I think. So what does that do for us, Andrew? Well, I'm, they're just trying to straighten their rig a little bit, so uh, just tightening the lower two diagonals, perhaps softening the top mast a little as well, depending on what they think. But they've got. So how, how, tell us how they adjust that for people that don't know how. How is it? What sort of rigging screw do they have there, or how do they do it? They've got the marvellous Mal Anderson uh, Brogger, Peter. So they're only small wires, they're only three millimetre so wires. So it's a rigging screw with a handle on it, basically. A, yeah, you twist a, it one way or another yeah, yeah, to right. either thread it up uh, yeah, or thread yeah. it down. That's right, yeah. yeah. And we're talking about quite small adjustments here, you know, two turns. Would not be, even, not yeah. even two turns. Yeah. Well, they look like they needed two turns, Jimmy. So. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and. The standing joke is the difference between slow and really fast is only three turns over the whole rig, so... It's minimal adjustments. Yeah, a couple of millimetres here and there, yeah. So they just needed about a couple of centimetres less marsh band to return to form, I think. And yeah, is that something you can you can feel in the boat? I mean, does the skipper feel that he's well, something's out of whack, or is it just looking at it, or no, is it just a combination in, in of things? In that case, both things, Pete, and yeah. visually, the, you know, the mast was overbent for the love curve in the mainsail, so visual cue, cue is there, and the boat doesn't sail high, and particularly in the lull, it, it uh, doesn't have enough weather helm in the lull. So we're all getting ready for a second race today, which will be the third heat, and the third heat is named after another famous 18-foot skiff sailor, the late Lance Watts, another Queenslander, five-time winner of the Australian titles before the Second World War and after the Second World War. So for the viewers, back in those days, the racing was entirely on the Brisbane River, which is a, which is a <clears throat> rather difficult racing venue, we'd say, uh, for the Brisbane boats at least. And, um, but the major championships have sailed there as well. But they're coarse and typically, you know, for all of almost all of the season up there, the southeasterly trade wind is what they sail in. And so they had quite a marvellous out and back course that went some miles down towards the sea down the river, starting near the centre of the city. And it was a beat um, with the current to the to the outlying mark and then a big run home. So they had the opportunity to put up all kinds of uh, contrivances. But a bit of zigging and zagging and wrinkles. Your memory is good from back in the day, Bucky. <laughs> yeah, my last, <laughs> my first race in 1936, mate. Yeah. Thank you. But, well, uh, uh, as we said earlier, this is the hundredth running of the Australian Championship, and the first official Australian titles was held in the 1912-1913 season. And after that, Queensland competitors won 20 of the first 35 championships staged up to and including the 1957-58 regatta. So they had a long dominance early on, the Queenslanders. And it's so good to see SeaTech from Queensland doing so well in the first couple of races today. So a lot of history has gone before us and I'm sure there's a lot of history still to come. But today's first race was named after Vic Vaughan and who sailed the Aberdeer and four won four consecutive Australian championships and a dominating figure in 18 foot skiff racing and for the viewers Aberdeer probably represented the beginning of the sort of light displacement skiff in all reality was the 
I think they sailed that boat with five or six people. I've, I was looking at some photos last night, actually, from, I think, about 1936, and I think it might have been five. Nobody on trapeze at that point, but they were learning about, you know, apparent wind sailing, and uh, there's some fantastic shots if you look at uh, the historic skiff website of them with a ringtail. I think there's one in Sydney, there's one going down one of the tighter reaches, Hamilton Reach on the Brisbane River taken obviously black and white in that period and uh, fabulous and and you know essentially with the addition of trapezes and foiled rudder and centerboard against what they had back then which is a, a drain, barbecue plate a barbecue plate essentially a fair bit of the performance gains is just from those two things you know and uh, dare say that they were highly skilled fellas as well well there's that Spectator Ferry, they got value for their money in the first race today, the second heat of the championships, and we're just watching in the distance the race winner Smeg capsizing. So down near the pin end, and we're waiting for the third race to get underway, third heat, and the second race today. In a good breeze again, 15 knots, south south Easter, same course. Two windwards, two leewards. So Pete, which way are you going to go up the beat this time? Uh, left. You're gonna what? You're gonna wait for the first puff, is a correct answer. But well, yeah, but you've got, got to make a decision. A bit, a bit, a bit. But you know what we're seeing, or what we saw on the face of that increase in wind, was further right than anything we'd previously seen today. Almost subject to the exception of the, within the rain school earlier. So. Six minutes. So Tech Two's just gone and done a little beat, running back downwind. Yeah, in plenty of wind here at the at the start line. Appliance is online, just in the middle of the line. And uh, what do we got? 14, 15 knots. Perhaps 16 in the middle of that one there. Yeah. 16, a bit more maybe. So Smeg, the winner of. Today's first race, Andu second, Noakes third, Yandu fourth. So Smeg have had a second and a first, and Andu have had a first and a second. But too early to be talking points at this stage. Yeah. Way too early. Smeg in the distance, you can see him above the committee boat. He's still capsized. I wonder what's going on there, Pete. That looks a bit weird. It does, doesn't it? Just finally getting it up, but it's no. still not in the boat. And it's the masts is still not pointing up to the sky, Peter. Told you that before. Yeah, well, they're struggling a bit down there, the boys. Well, they're not all on the fin no. yet. Here they come. Uh, it won't come up until they're all no, swinging, they off, swinging off the bloke at the back on the whose back whose back is to them from the wing. Good to go now. So hopefully no damage done to them. So standing by for five minutes. Yeah, so the committee hasn't moved the line, I don't think. They have reset the gate marks to be a little more equal. They set one reset one gate mark by the look of that. Okay, five minutes to go for the third heat of this Australian 18 foot skiff championship. Sydney Harbour, good south easterly breeze, 14 knots perhaps today at the start, with more spikes in it to come, I would think. Well, another bit of convectional rain out to sea of us. It might not get here, but it might. Four and a half minutes to go. And all the fleet are intact. I don't think anyone's gone home with gear damage. Another boat in the tide in the middle, Lazarus, I think. Jimmy, yep. Yeah, Lazarus Developments, I think it was. The young boys, aren't they? So, just over four minutes to go. <laughs> oh, it's a bit... couple of boats a long way upwind of the start line.
good breeze here again, Andrew, at the start, isn't it? What nice. 15 plus <laughs> knots, yep. Yep. 3.50 to go yep. to the start. Remembering the first race today, we had a general recall, then an individual recall. Um, the eye flag was up for the second start, and most of the fleet behaved themselves. Coming up to three three minutes. Okay, three minutes to go. Boats have capsized. There's Plenty of boats up wind of the start yeah, line, up, Peter. Up that's up for the sure. Start line, yeah, the old 80-footer bar and restaurant. He's going to have to set a shoot to get back, you think, but he'll probably just do it. He's way up wind. Yeah, and the Queensland is further up, and the Lazarus develop. Lazarus. Oh yeah, there's a couple up there. Yeah. Develop. Pete, I've just noticed way off screen. Balmain Slake look like they're missing a bow pole, so I dare say they'll be heading home. Okay. <clears throat> We're just opening here, Bradley's. Just Look who's in the boat points. in front of us. <laughs> Very colourful home and winning. Okay, two minutes, almost. Two minutes. So we've got young boys in Lazarus still capsized. They're going to miss the start, you'd say. The race sponsor today, the Lazarus Group. So it's Lazarus Capital Partners and sponsors, and the other Lazarus Capital Developments boat that's still in capsized with and a minute 30 the, to go. And the tide. Just getting it back up. Elvi almost capsizing there. Yeah, Elvi. To the right of the screen. Minute 20 to go. And doing row F, indeed. They've just come up from a swim, Bucko. Oh, They've just had a swim at minute 15 to go. They're going to be struggling. Oh, they'll wriggle their way out of that, Pete. They'll probably easy. power their way down to the Leeward end. But anyway, uh, majority up here at this windward end. And a good breeze, Andrew. Really good breeze. Good right pressure. Tech two at yeah. this end. 16 Smeg knots. In, Smeg in the middle of Noakes down at the pin. They're the favourite. 50 seconds. Noakes is liking that pin end. I don't know where Andrew ended up after all that. He's coming. Oh, he's coming this way. He's tacked back, has he? Yeah, he's gone back. Okay, gone 38 back. seconds to go. Tech 2 will get the committee boat, you'd think. 30 seconds. Finport a little bit too advanced here. <clears throat> Noakes is down at the... Committee boat end. Ilvi's down there as well. 18 seconds to go. They're a, bit, they're a little bit premature. It's pretty windy. 10. Ilvi's put the foot down. Tech 2's close up here. 4, yeah, 3, 2, whoa. No, it's all right. Whoa. What have we got? Finport must have been over. Looks like all clear. Okay, wow. we're underway. I need new glasses, Jimmy. I borrow mine. Mine, I think I need new ones. Speg was buried in that start. Oh, the Shore and Partners capsizing. Not having a good day, no, are they? not having a good day. They capsized in the first heat. First race today, second heat. So we're away in the second race today, the third heat of the Australian titles. Tech 2 got the start at the windward end. That boat that's just floundering just to the right of the screen, that's Lazarus. Capital Developments, that's the, the young boys, they're just getting it back up from a swim. So, Ilvi down at the, the pin end. Yeah. Got uh, John O'Witty at the helm there. Hey Pete, what do you think the right rig is now? Uh, it's just, I'd, I'd say the number two with a reef. Thank you. And a storm chip. Yep. Very solid pressure coming down the track now. Yes, yeah, so Yandu and uh, 
Noakes Blue, both with the reefs in, so they'll be liking what they're seeing, looking upwind. Plenty of white caps, a good clear runway up to the weather mark, and we're off, all on starboard. Yeah, everybody too scared to tack, Peter, apart from anything else, yeah. right? Anyway, Andrew, after that cap size, he looked dead and buried with about a minute and a half to go, but he's wriggled his way through and he's leading the pack from the left-hand side, but they're flying in towards Steel Point. Speck starting to get rumbly in the middle of the fleet. It's from the left is the Kitchen Maker. Sea Tech. Yeah. Behind the Kitchen Maker is the 18-footers. Then just to the right is the Birkenhead, and then Andu, Rag and Famish. <coughs> Can't really live there being the kitchen maker too much longer though, can you? There's no. getting a lot of gas there. It doesn't hurt too much to just put the bow down and spurt forward. Yeah. C-Tex making it pretty tough for them there, as is Andu. Really good pressure. First of the steel point shore will be John O'Witty and the Ill Bay. He was right down that pin end. And Pushed the pedal, he just went as hard as he could. It's free to go. There's Andu, getting it on the other tack and crossing, a different story, Peter. Yeah. There's Andu and Noakes, they were, they're well up of this group that have gone left. Well, they've all gone left, really, but I mean, from the pit end. Really good pressure rolling down Steel Point here. Outgoing tide. What do you think about this little grey cloud, Pete? <coughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad we're in here. Yes, correct. Zilvay, correct. he's not far off attack. And uh, he might have to take a few stirs going back. Yes. Three's pretty even, I think. Pete. Joel yeah. Turner and John Walton with John O'Witty. There they go. Pretty good tack for a makeshift crew. Nice tack. <laughs> Gee, yeah. He's going to converge him with Noakes will be his problem here. No, I he's, he's, he's across. Body language suggests he's across, yeah. yeah. Body language says we're crossing just. Close your eyes and hope, I think, but uh, anyway. Yeah, lean forward a bit, mate. Yeah, he's back in, you know. Here he take down. a few here, some chips off. Oh. And he'll... Oh, oh no. Ilve. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh. Not enough drop the main sheet, I think. Yeah, not enough vang off and drop the main sheet. Yeah. <laughs> how do I how do I know that, Peter? Well done. Done it before. Yeah, now it's before. really windy again. Yeah. Look at this white caps everywhere across Rose Bay. Oh, there's the old kitchen makeup. Not enough jib back in the start of the attack, but anyway, they survived. So, Pete, you think Tech Two leads? No, I don't. I think Andrew will cross him. Tech Two's. Tacked. Tech two's tech anyway, tech. Okay. We're not going to find out for a bit. No. This this is the group that went hard left off the starting line. Yeah. Very windy now. And Andu Andu looks pretty powerful. Yeah, going he, across he's certainly towards marched, Shark Island. Marching through the water, isn't he? And we haven't seen the the Smeg. Smeg's oh, the Smeg's okay. He's back a little. He's in plenty. In plenty. Charter Cat getting in the way again of whoever that is on the right there. There's Rag and Famish. You'll see. Lazarus. Yep. Lazarus above Rag and Famish. You'll see Smeg shortly. Okay, he's there not too is. bad, Smeg. Didn't get the greatest of starts, I don't think, but there's the Rag and Famish. Plenty of wind. As we look up wind, they're about halfway up this beat to Rose Bay. Windward turny mark. Four legs, two laps. Two windwards, two leewards. Yeah, no, you're right, Pete. Andrew leads pretty yeah, comfortably. Big, powerful crew. They yep. look good in this up pressure. Breeze. Lazarus is close by as well. Smeg, not far out of it. And, and coming off the island, Fisher Pikel on the right there. There's Noakes. And here comes a cross between the rag and Noakes. 
Rag. Oh, what's got a rag and a big duck here. Now he's across. Just. Ooh. I think there might have been a bit of politeness from Sean there, but we might have also waved him through. Yep. <laughs> Noakes coming into really good wind on this left-hand side of the course. I think it's pretty solid across the track, Pete, now. Noakes tacking. And Smeg's got good upwind speed as well, Andrew. He's got himself right up there yeah, again. He hasn't had any trouble getting out of wherever no, he was, has no. he? Very solid. So the leaders off uh, the southern end of Shark Island on Port Tack. Going in towards Point Piper, there's Andrew Lazarus, who's tacked. He's on starboard. He'll go just ahead of Smeg. Or will he? It's going to be close here. No, maybe Smeg's across. Well, Smeg's back across Lazarus. Yeah. He's got some good speed today, Smeg. Yeah, he didn't have it yesterday as well. Going right into the eastern side of Point Piper. Yeah, I think. Attack shortly. Will they be. Yeah. Well, in the little grotto. We'll see here. Yeah. Big puff. There's a really good puff. Big puff. It's a, it's a right handed, too, I think, isn't it? Looking at. Yeah, it is. Looking yeah, at Smeg. He, Smeg might have been. He's just going to be safe here, I think, though, no, Pete. He thinks that Andrew is on the ley line, so he'll just go to there. I think we'll see that. <laughs> just try and keep it a bit simple. Next cross will be Lazarus and Smeg. I think Lazarus might, might have, and Smeg's tack short. Wow, that's a pretty gutsy move because he's well short of the line. So he's committed himself to two little extra tacks, whereas Lazarus might lie from there. Yeah, Lazarus has gone as a bit further than actually uh, Andrew went. Now there's Tech 2 and Fisher and Pikel coming in from the left-hand side. They've made up some ground down there by going left. Yeah, well, who would have thunk? Yeah. So it's, it's a funny bit, but it's going to be a good one. Me just lifting it on a little bit of a right-hander as Lazarus is looking to hold down second spot from Smeg. Now Smeg on the outside of the lifting puff. And Andrew cracked cheeks now, laying. Yeah, he's got the, the lay very easy there now. So Smeg's got to do an extra tack, and Lazarus will, cl will cleanly get there in a big puff. Okay, Andrew leads. He's got about a 20 second lead over Lazarus. Marcus Ashley Jones always provides us with plenty of thrills and spills. Here comes Marcus. So Smeg can tack straight away here. Yeah. There comes the Lazarus. And it looks like the wind's down the middle of the track here to some degree. The Lazarus can't get the bow down. Okay, he's around. Lazarus. Oh, there goes Smeg. Bit neat. Smooth. Nice bit, and neat. Bit smoother. Yeah. So Andrew's got on the other jive pretty promptly, just coming into shot, I think. Yep. So I think that's the right move from Andrew, just covering off the stronger wind. It appears to be towards Shark Island down the middle here. Smeg following suit as well. Here comes the in, rag in, in fourth the spot. Yep. Harry Price. And Rag and Family doing a job set, which is the correct answer oh. if they can get it done. Smeg and Fisher Pike all round together. Tech two. Tech two and Fisher Pike. Tech two, sorry. Yeah, Smeg's oh, gone. Oh, tech two. Tech oh. two. Oh, oh, oh. Jived above Rag and Famish. In a there rush. Noakes next. In a rush they jived. Well, there's plenty on here. Yep. And plenty of wind over on the Shark Island side, Pete. Comes Ilve. Yeah, good wind down the Shark Island side. Gee, Andu in the distance. He's almost halfway down this run, isn't he? He's yep. gone. gone. Absolutely gone.
Let's rag and famish and take two. And Lazarus and uh, Spade just as we watch Nike's jive. It's only taken Davey Gilmore one, hit, one race to get the hang of the nature. Good work. So Andu has bolted in the distance from Smeg. And Fisher Pikel, she's running at about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six or seven spot. Smeg off screen to the oh, right, just Smeg like they hit something. Smeg just ate it as he yeah. like Smeg has capsized violently. Another good puff coming in under this cloud. Yeah, there's I plenty didn't. of wind. It's 18 knots here at least. I, I mentioned the cloud, Peter. You did. You did. <laughs> it's, a beauty, it's a beauty, isn't it? So Smeg's effort to get in that placings is done and dusted, you'd say he's quite a vigorous cap size, which opens the door for Lazarus, the rag, the tech two to find out second spot, but Andu is gone. She has bolted down this run. She's almost down at the gate. These boats are just up passing Shark Island as we watch the rag vying out for second spot. So again, the breeze is sort of rotated to the right in the squall. These boats close to laying down to the gate. The three boats we're covering here at the moment, Tech 2, Lazarus and the Ragged Fanny. In the distance, I can see a ferry gonna come across the course. He could make some interference for some of the boats, but this leading group will get across, I would think. Yep. And they're going faster than a ferry, Pete. I think they're gonna, only gonna go a couple of hundred metres. The group that are back a bit, they're probably in a sort of 10th, 11th position. Yandu, there's Lazarus. She was uh, second at the weather mark the first time. She's valiantly trying to hold on to second here. Challenge being thrown down by Harry Price and the Rag and Famish. And Tech 2, Jack McCartney. All laying down to the gate here. Meanwhile, Andu, she's around the gate and gone. She'd be a good minute ahead. Looks as though the rag could get down here in second spot. Yeah, I think they'll go around. I think Rag will be second, Tech will be third, and I think Lazarus will be fourth. By the time they do whatever they've got to do, Lazarus dropping early. Right. A good lay line by Rag and Famish. He'll drop and just go round the left-hand mark, looking downwind. There he goes. And take two. Oh, oh, doing the same thing. Okay. Yeah, this pretty good Probably. safe. Oh no, take yep. two's got a problem. Spinning, spinning sheet stuck under the jib tack. Oh, he got oh, it. Oh, got it. Yeah, as Lazarus comes wow. powering over the top of him. Too much wind to try anything tricky here. Yeah. So Rag goes round second. Lazarus coming powering in in third spot and Tech 2 just had that little wobble they've cleaned it up and they'll be fourth they'll Fisher Pike will be next and then Noakes then a fair gap there's the ferry crossing a few of the boats so the dirty air of the ferry's probably gone behind oh, the wheel having I mean, to bounce around just in the yeah. ferry wake yep so Tech 2 taking the opportunity Take anyway, it we're on Noakes coming into the mark, dropping the chute. I'm trying to drop. I'm trying to drop. And the guy's behind. Led by Andu, Yandu, Noakes Blue, Burrowang. Jim Port's there. There's the Burrowang. Ilvay, Yandu splitting them with a red and blue oval, there's Ilvay jibing. 
Oh, the breeze lifted off now down here to some degree, Pete, hasn't it? Yeah. Burrowang with a tricky manoeuvre, but... Oh, Noakes youth just let the halyard go. That's not recommended. Pro big prawn crop. Yes, yeah. Yeah. a few prawns for dinner there. So we're up the final beat of the second race today, heat three of the Australian titles. Amazing, isn't it? Breeze back down to yes. about perhaps not even 10, 12 knots no. in the middle of the course now. It was 20 knots earlier when Smeg ate it in pretty spectacular fashion. So, test of the rig changing gear situation. Side stays off, coming them off. There's Tech 2 and Lazarus. They were second and third at the uh, well, at the uh, the mark with uh, along with Rag and Famish, so they were all grouped together for second, third, and fourth. So that's the real battle because Andu is uh, cleared out. She's halfway up this beat. As for forlornly, we watched Smeg run downhill off camera after he's capsized. But Lazarus doing a good job to get off Tech Two. Steel point in the background. Spectator ferry in the background as well. That's the view upwind. Not that much breeze now, probably down about 12 knots. Nice clear water between the boats and the weather marks, so there's no interference from boats or ferries. Queensland are trailing most of the fleet coming downhill. Yeah. Hang on to them, boys, you're doing a good job. Young crew. Also got a reef in their mainsail. Is the defending champion, Tech 2. <coughs> so, in hey, I fi finally got um, confirmation on who was over in the heat 2 was Noakes Youth. Okay, and that's what we thought, wasn't it? Yeah, so they, they tried to radio us, but obviously we got our radio turned down because I don't think everyone at home wants to listen to, our, to hear our radio chat. Correct. So that, did def so that didn't affect anything, so... Tech 2 and Lazarus with Rag and Famage fighting out for second, third position. Pete, I think maybe a bit of game of find the wind here to some degree and the left side looks over to the top of the beat here. We're with Tech 2, they're just into a squall now. Yes, it's not anywhere near as vigorous as it was, no. You'll see coming in from the left, there's the race leader, Andu. He's got a big lead. Big, big lead. And Tech I think 2 will be tacking any second. Tech 2 looking for a cross here on Lazarus. There's a nice little bit of breeze coming down to them. There they go. 3, 2 and 1. Lazarus will be on starboard and will go... Tech 2 having, having, Tech to, ease two, away. having to get away. Just. Gee. Ooh, that's a tough manoeuvre. Very tough, wasn't it? But they Lazarus, Lazarus would have enjoyed that, though, <laughs> yes. just, just quietly. <laughs> they managed it well as Lazarus. That sort of guy. There they go. Well, that's the best race we've seen from Lazarus for a while, yeah. so... Cam Gundy and Geronimo Harrison in the crew. But the rag's going to be comfortably second here, Pete. Or maybe not. No, oh, right. look at that. Left hand air, who would have thought? Really good left hander as we're watching Lazarus. He's on a ripper. Yeah. Going 
Almost no, pointing no, at the no, weather no, mark. No, no, the rag's going to cross them both. Yeah, maybe. How about that? Cross tech two by about. Next cross, you'll see as rag and famish coming into screen, and that will be the second placing here because rag crossed tech two, but very close. There's not much in this. Very close. Yeah. Marcus put the bow down early rather than do a late dip. Yep. You could see what was going to happen. So rather than do a big hard pull away at the end, he made it gradual and did a nice job of that. So it's close for second. Very, very close. Very. Andu is literally in a different postcode. He is. Yeah, he's he just is. absolutely smoked today upwind in this second race. What is the postcode of Shark Island, Jimmy? Well, we're over here at Milk Beach. He's over there at Potts Point. Surely there's a couple of postcode changes there. I was trying to buy some real estate in Milk Beach, but couldn't find the postcode for it either. Nelson couldn't, Park, couldn't, there you go. Couldn't find the checkbook, Bucko, rather than postcode. Oh, the checkbook that was big enough. Quite correct. OK, well, we're back, correct. back at the races, as they say. Rag and Famish. And it Lazarus. looks a bit rainy to the south. It perhaps. does. Rain squall at the city, which should favour the guys on the right side, so we'll see. This is a huge lead to Andu. They've been quite outstanding in this second race. They had speed yesterday, they've had speed today. Yeah. If you've got speed, it's a pretty good starting point. Remembering Smeg was. Uh, in second spot and capsized down the first spinning run. So it ended their day after they won the first race today, the, the second heat. Yeah, I don't know what happened to me, but I think it looked as if they got the spinning attack in under the wave. That was why it was so quick. Oh, it, it was, yeah. it was, wasn't it? Like it just happened so quick. It was like they hit a garbage bag or something. Like it just, you know, as you said, the attack of the spinning it. Yeah. OK, as it's we come incredible. round, we'll see the race leader and the weather mark for the last time. A run to the finish. And lay around, there's a few little puffs here, nothing very extreme. So all the time in the world now. But a terrific set. Probably starting to hit their straps at the right time, you'd have to say. Yep. These boys. Well, same crew. Wait till I've been in about you know ten races, Pete. You know the, their combination are clearly improving, and clearly their technical work has been pretty good. Ian was still worried about their downwind speed relative to Ian Murray. Yep. 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 But I guess up range, they're pretty far up the weight. So I can tell you that Tech 2 is now second, Pete. There you go, he is. Oh, no, not on screen, guys, but the, the jumble and the little rain squall to the west of us has bent the wind to the right. And Tech 2 was furthest right, so. You just say Matty Senna go in, he was looking under the boom just with all the other 18s yeah. coming up just to paint a mental picture yeah, yeah, in his head yeah, of where yeah. they are. Yeah, yeah. Because um, obviously when you're out here on wire, you're yep. blind with the spinnaker because it blocks those windows that you see in the, in the jib and the mainsail. Yeah, sailing downwind is a bit problematic from that standpoint. Yeah. So you, having a look. Having a look and being careful. Good idea, both. Both. Especially when you've got a good lead like this, last thing you need to do is tangle yourself up with someone yep. unnecessarily. Correct. Let's see if we can find the pothole that the uh, sneak fell in down here. Probably not filled in yet. Yeah, RMS would probably send a truck out to fill it in. Oh, yeah. it? More rain coming. I think these guys will just do a couple, a couple of little jibes here. Nice. But quite a big angle. There's Seri Jarman just looking upwind for some pressure. It's quite light here. But the Tech 2 and Lazarus are just, just gone around. around. So that's the lead. It's massive. They're halfway down this leg. The breeze quite light. Probably 
lucky to be 12 knots here and the puffs even less. St Andrews setting up for a jibe. I think they like the pressure just over here on the left. Yeah, there's a heading pressure on forward, so they've done the right thing. Not that anybody's even possibly likely to catch them, but... Don't want to leave anything out there, though, do you? No, no. They don't want to stub their toe, but at the moment they're... Um, I think the sneak, way. the sneak pothole was about here, wasn't it, Jimmy? I think just a little over the left of the camera cam from where we are now, mate. They, uh, assume, well, it was a big, big pothole. Assume the brace position. Let's check two if we look back into Rose Bay in second spot. Lazarus is third, and the rag is somewhere there, vying for the second place as well. But at the moment, it's tech two, and we're in the cockpit of Yan Andu, as they're about 300 metres from the finish at Taylor Bay. And Andu, downrange VMG run, not quite using full riding moment, as we talked about at the start of the stream. And they just work on it a bit to try and maintain attached flow on both sails. You see Matty Stenner, the sheet end, just in on the inner bar. So they, they're using about 90% of the riding moment. Yeah, lucky to be 10 knots here, Andrew. It's really soft. Yep, yep. Really soft. So there's Lazarus uh, just jiving. He's gone the... Uh, Eastern side of Shark Island, but when we can see him, Harry Price and the Rag and Famish has rolled the dice and gone down the western side. Well, he ended up fourth at the top. He didn't really have too many options to do something different, and he lost those places by being on the wrong side of the shift. So now he's dug into the shift for, as hard as he can for the downwind run. So the battle will be certainly on for second. This is a clear win to Andu. They just a Sunday dawdle, really, but there's the Rag. Put the main sheet and the spinnaker in the cleat, Pete. And steer, steer around it, Chief. Sit on the gunnel and yeah. the rag do, uh, jiving. So all these boats will be looking for a bit of pressure. There's yeah. not much coming down. There's... No, no. And now you see there, and do still VMG running, but now in enough wind they can use all the riding moment. You know, main in the middle of the boat. Walls on the main so leak still streaming from the downwash off the inside of the spinnaker. Pretty neat and the mainsail nicely deepened up, Jimmy. Yeah, without a doubt. It looks, looks lovely, doesn't looks it? Looks really yeah, well set up. Terrific performance by Andu, Perfect. Sam Newton and Matt Stenner. Second in the first race today and a clear winner. Great upwind speed. And having won yesterday, they were second and now first, so Pretty solid scoreline to begin this Australian titles. Nice job. First, <laughs> second, first in the three races. One more jiving in, you'd think. Here they go. Almost there. Oh, going to drop, Pete. That's a that's nice... Not quite so safe ending, but anyway. There they go. Get the spinning it out early so we get home early. So here's the, here's the battle for a second. I think it will be tech two at the moment, holding off the challenge from Lazarus. And good the pressure, rag. good pressure coming, Pete. The rag way out. A head of Bradley's from, head. A header for these blokes and a lift for the rag. So, yeah, that's, that's going to seal. Advantage, advantage to Tech 2 and Lazarus here. Seal fourth for those boys. So they're both, and if they get this really good path, they're both going to do one job. Is there, here comes the, the rag in with the purple spinning up, but he won't cross them. So, they've got, these boats have got one more jive and in. There are in about the finishing line, just I think, or maybe Tech Two can get down. No, he's got he's it. Getting he's getting down. They're both getting down there. Great header. Tech yeah. Two just going to do a little at the right time. A little jive. He's there. So Pete, in there, it's only about a minute fifteen. They won by. Yes. <laughs> only in a in a short race. It's enough. It's enough. Yeah. Quite right. Lazarus third. Their best effort for a 
Yep. A long while and then the rag consistently in fourth spot. So good to see the rag again, you know, getting good look at the podium. Yeah, yeah. And then a good long gap then to the next boat, which will be Noakes in fifth spot. The breeze has died, there's a few little puffs, but nothing great at all as we look up wind. There's Noakes. Uh, the poor old Smeg. Noakes trying to hold off Yandu for fifth. So it's between Noakes and Yandu here. Yandu's in a much better puff and has got the bow right down. He might get into fifth spot here, Yandu. Woody's version of VMG running, different to everybody else's. Yeah, well, he, he gets lower. Okay, here's the go. We've got a nice jiving, got a big fat spinnaker, but and Yandu will be on port. Yeah. And Noakes will be on starboard. Good stuff from the Noakes boys. Yeah, pretty smart, I think. And Yandu, Yandu has to jive. And in a good squall too, Pete. Noakes is going to do this, I think he'll get fifth. A good finish here. And Noakes will be fifth. Yandu will be yeah. sixth. And another consistent effort from John Winning. And yeah. also from Sean Langman in yeah. Noakes. Yeah. And that's a good effort for them. Davey Gilmore on the main sheet. Yeah, well, they've had a third and a fifth today. Yandu yeah, will have a fourth and a sixth. Yeah. Next is Fisher and Pikel, Pete. Fisher Pikel, that's their Followed best. Followed by Ilvi. Their best race. The Fisher. <coughs> Ilvi. John O'Witty. Here he comes, full noise. Don't hit the finishing boat, John O. Yeah, his father's on that. He's pretty happy with himself, or why wouldn't he be? Good effort. Take the spinning again, John O. You'll don't forget. Okay. Good. The That's borrowing the hotel for, and what are you predicting here, Pete? Any, uh, any, any issues? Excitement, excitement, excitement for the bloke on port. Oh, what are we going to do? The borrowing. We're going to jive. We're going to jive. Oh. oh! Well, I told you there'd be excitement. There's a bit of yelling and screaming. The borrowing. Wow. I think there might be a flag up about that one, mate. <clears throat> the borrowing and jeez. I don't know whether you can do that, but I didn't see them, I don't know. Okay, the 80 footer bar and restaurant. And oh, then the Royal Oak. Kraken race for the 18 footer bar and restaurant. Amazing. Finport just trying to drift across the finishing line. There a few of us shaking their heads. The Finport will finish with the mass in the water, I think. Yeah, here come the the last of the cavalry coming down wind. Oh. Smeg will be next, I think, his, after he's uh, capsized, went in second place on the first spinnaker run. Well, that was not a bad recovery since he was stone. Oh, here he goes again, Pete. Oh, Smeg, off camera, he's got issues. Issues, oh, it's the crew, where's the crew? <laughs> Don't they do apply for a job at RMS? Oh, fill in the puzzles. Smeg's in all sorts of trouble here. The kitchen makers across, then Shore and Partners. What is Smeg? Coco's out. Someone's out the back of the boat, still on the trapeze wire. Is it Coco? No, looks like. Looks like Zach. Bridgie, Bridgie looks like he's over on the leeward wing. Yeah. The other blokes are trying to find their snorkels. I'm telling you. Oh dear. Young Zach. Just getting dragged along. Yeah. So just had a bit of equivocation about whether they could cross the starboard tackers and a bit of indecision. Zach's right. learning the hard way how to get back into an 18. That's right. <laughs> so has the, has the Finport finished, Peter, do you think? Uh, Not yet. Possibly. He has now, yeah. Wow. Well, Interesting. Never a dull moment with these 18 footers as the vet heritage goes across in Noakes Blue. Well, that's about it, I think. I don't think there's any more finishes looking up. Oh, there's one boat still. Is that Birkenhead, I think? There's a couple of boats going around the top, Mark. There you go. Finport's finally so Finport, finished. No, that was for Noakes, or not? No, no, no you're Finport. right. No, you're Finport. Right. Finport. Noakes finished. <laughs>
the Hooter before, Bucko. Correct. Well, Mark's up there. You're dead right. Finport was looking famous for ninth, but he's now drifted down to about 16th or 17th. So, uh, anyway, another day of thrills and spills. And don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow for two more races. So, Pete, that was pretty interesting, though, wasn't it? And the up and down of the range and the left and right of the puff sorted, sorted it out. But uh, the Andu certainly got some speed upwind, haven't they? Oh, they certainly have, but I think Smeg, Smeg wouldn't be too disappointed. I mean, they were good upwind. They obviously had that capsized downwind, which is all part of the game, unfortunately, but I think once they can maybe sort that issue out, they'll be, they'll be strong. But the day, as you say, really belonged to Andrew, especially the second race. Yeah. They look very, very quick. Apart from having a swim between the races, they were... Yeah, pretty, pretty solid, weren't they? So we'll just recap as we wind up today's uh, second and third heats. The second heat was won by Smeg. Andu was second. Noakes was third. Yandu fourth. Tech two fifth. Rag and Famish sixth. Lazarus seventh. Sea Tech eighth. Ninth was Finport. And tenth was the Kitchen Maker. And then in the final race today, the third heat of the championship, Andu a clear winner. Tech two second. Lazarus third, Rag and Famish fourth, Noakes fifth, Yandu sixth. You got appliances sixth, underneath you, Dylan. Fisher and Paykel seventh, Ilvi eighth, Burrowang ninth, and the 18 footer bar and restaurant tenth. So that's it from a rather gloomy and uh, empty Sydney harbour. The southerly breeze is still in. I think we've got that forecast for tomorrow, Andrew, haven't we? Uh, the high is resolutely not moving, and the low is accordingly also nearly stationary, so it should be quite similar. Maybe not quite as much rainy type stuff, but similar winds, direction and strength. OK, well, don't forget to leave a comment or hit the subscribe button and like our live stream if you're enjoying it. Also, if you've got any questions, feel, please feel free to leave them and we'll uh, get back to them as soon as we can. So on behalf of Jimmy Bury and the Sale Media team and Andrew <laughs> Buckland, we're going to say good afternoon from Sydney Harbour and don't forget we'll be back tomorrow for two races from 2.30. We look forward to your company then. This is Peter Shipway saying a very good afternoon from Sydney Harbour.